Hi, my name is Greg Peake from uh, Texas Instruments and from the, connect the Wireless Connectivity Group. Um, here today we're going to be talking about uh, connecting Wi-Fi to MCUs to enable the, the Internet of Things. And this is about um, looking at the, the home environment, the building environment, the industrial environment, and seeing how much MCUs are actually in electronic devices and being able to connect them not just via wires, but also via, let's say, standards, wireless standards that are already pervasive in, in those particular environments. And in this case, we're talking about Wi-Fi. So 802.11, B and G, for example. So just to talk a little bit in perspective and <clears throat> in terms of wireless technologies, and we've already heard some discussions today on, on BLE, and tomorrow we'll hear a little bit about Zigbee. And then there's, there's basically a connectivity, a wireless connectivity standard fit for purpose for different needs and, of course, for different applications. Wi-Fi has its advantages, and as you can see on the slides, um, there's different criteria you look at when you're looking at a wireless network. There's throughput. There's um, the, the, the power that is required to actually drive the solution. And of course, then there's the range. And if you look at this particular slide that's showing at the moment, you see the Wi-Fi has, has fairly good throughput versus uh, BLE, RF4CE, um, and uh, Zigbee and Bluetooth. It has um, a fairly good uh, power output. And therefore, it also has a good, uh, a good power consumption in terms of you need a fairly good power source for Wi-Fi typically, although I'll talk a little bit about that and how we, we move into a more of a power saving type of mode for our Wi-Fi solutions. And finally, um, on the range side, where it's uh, 2.4 gigahertz and also 5 gigahertz, the higher the frequency clearly in a, in a, in a closed environment, a partition environment, the more difficult it is for, for uh, radio waves to, to, to go through the walls and you have absorption effects, etc. So Wi-Fi is okay and we, we see that in the home a lot and it works in the home. A single access point will, will be enough to cover a, a home and that's what we're counting on for, for this particular technology in this particular application for the connecting the Internet of Things. What we're introducing here today is um, uh, what we call the Simple Link Wi-Fi CC3000. Um, not just the chip itself, but also a module. So we have uh, third parties that provide modules for us for our Wi-Fi and our wireless connectivity products. But uh, in this particular case, TI has also got a, a, a module. And the beauty of this product is that it's a very simple interface from a hardware point of view and from a software point of view. So from a, a software loading on an MCU, there's very little to do and we supply some amp sample applications in order to be able to make that interface to the wireless chip. Uh, it's very low in terms of memory footprint and very low in terms of the CPU uh, loading needs. And that's one of the beauties of this, of this particular, or, uh, that's a few of the, the beauties, let's say, of this particular device. Be able to connect to different MCUs, different complexities going down to from 16 to 10 megahertz, even a, a 5 megahertz CPU should be able to handle this, uh, this type of Wi-Fi connection. There's a couple of things, and if we consider the Internet of Things and consider black boxes and consumer-orientated equipment, um, when we bring that into the home, we have to ask ourselves, how do we connect this device to the network? What's the simplest approach? What's, what's the easiest and foolhardy type of way to get it to connect and so that I can start transmitting or receiving data from this particular device. We have a particular t technology that I'll talk about called Smart Config and we'll demonstrate that here today. And also uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, the cloud connection and how these devices can be used both within a home or within a building and also from, from the cloud type service. <clears throat> Just to get started and what we have here, so it's mostly about a demonstration really. We've got an MSP430 FRAM board. So this is a board you can, you can buy off the, off the web for approximately $30. What it includes on it is a, an MSP430, of course, um, a thermostat or a thermistor, and also a three-axis accelerometer. So it's got a couple of sensors on there that we can pull the data from. And then when, with the use of the CC3000 uh, type module, we can connect this device wirelessly and then, of course, be able to transmit data and receive data over a wireless network. And here I've just got it configured so that we're able to uh, power up uh, with a battery. 
So you can see from the slides, <coughs> we've got some different I.O. on this particular board. The main, um, the main thing about the, the MSP, or one of the main things about MSP430 is the ability to connect different I.O.s, and it has a, a good range of GPIO features, including ADD converters and the ability to have uh, compare and capture type of IPs behind these GPIOs. So I can, I can generate PWM type signals for dimming functions or for lowering DC type levels and very easy to control and capture as well on the other side. Then if we talk about the module itself, so this is the CC3000 module. This is actually the, the TI version. So it's a self-contained solution. It's on this particular board from a development point of view. It's a universal interface that we have on a number of our different boards, uh, Stellaris included, uh, also C5000. Allows us to plug and play different wireless modules. We also have the same form factor for, for Zigbee, for example. With, this is the actual module itself. We have an external 2.4 gigahertz antenna here and the ability to, to also extend the range a little with an external antenna. Within the module, and you can see that on the slide, there's a number of functions apart from just the CC3000. Of course, the, you need power and you need conversion type, um, uh, let's say, devices in there. So we've got DC-DCs, we've got uh, FETs for controlling the actual power of the device to be able to switch it into a no power type of mode. We've got level shifters from 1.8 volts here to 3.3 on the, the MSP. We've got an E squared PROM to, to store data, calibration information, and, and patch updates. And of course, we've got the clocks in there as well. So we've got a 26 megahertz crystal and a, an RTC, a 32 kilohertz RTC as well. On the, the front end, <coughs> also inside the module, you can't really see it, but we've got a front end chip and a 2.4 gigahertz bandpass filter for, the, um, for making sure we're, we're aligned with the ISM band. The interface between the MSP and the CC3000 is more about power, so the main core power, which is we call VBAT, the I.O. power, the, the power enabled to able to control the power modes of the device, an interrupt, and of course this connection for data is a very simple SPI interface. And that, that's what makes this guy so prevalent and so accessible for low-cost, low-complexity type MCU products. So coming back to the, the, the problem statement really is <clears throat> how, do we, how do we create a network out of a device like this? So we buy a device, how do we connect this? We take it home, how do we connect it to our access point, our home network? Well, it's very simple. Um, we have uh, a, uh, a mechanism called Simple Config. And this type of device, it doesn't have a screen, doesn't have a display, doesn't have a keyboard. We're not able to enter in pin codes. There are a number of things that we can't do with it that we could normally do if we were going to connect a PC or a tablet to our access point. So what we have to do is a, a, we have a little technology that, that kind of assists with this. So if I power on the device, we can go into what we call smart config mode. And if you take a look at the, the slides, I'm just going to prepare that, the board, to go into smart config mode straight away. So the LED indicator here means that the CC2000 is actually on. We also have this flashing LED here. It means we're in smart config mode. It's listening for some signals to tell it where to connect to. So here we have an application <coughs> that is actually logged into the same access point that I want this device, the CC3000 device, to log into or connect as well. And provided that's the case, I've started an application. It's our smart config application that will send all the necessary information that is needed by this device to connect to the access point over Wi-Fi in a special way. That's our little trade secret there. In order for this guy to, to connect directly. So you see on the, the application, we've got the SSID. We've got a password if needed. At the moment, we've got an open network, so no password required. It's picked up the gateway IP address because this, this tablet is already connected to the, the access point. We have a key as well that may or may not be used. It depends um, if, you, if, if there's multiple devices and if your neighbor's connecting to a, a similar network and a similar access point and a number of things all need to line up together, then it's handy to have perhaps a key in there in order to make your connection a little bit more differentiated to the, the, the guy next door. So you're not connecting to his access point, he's not connecting to yours. 
this smart config operation only really needs to happen just the once. Once it's configured, the information <coughs> is stored on the <coughs> excuse me on the CC3000, and then it, every time it's powered back up, it'll automatically connect to that that access point again. So here, <coughs> we're just going to press the start button. So the tablet is now sending information out on the Wi-Fi signal to this particular board. Okay, now it's connected. <coughs> so these LED indicators indicate that um, there's an association that's been made. We've got an IP address, and now we're ready to actually start sending data. So now it's connected. What, what can we actually do with it? So now we have an application that then communicates with the IP address or goes and finds this particular module, communicates with it, and now that we've got, you know, this board has a couple of sensors on it, we can then go and play with the sensors. So for example, if I go to the PC, which is also logged into the, to the access point, And I start up an application <coughs> which is going to use the, the wireless connectivity of the PC. And it's going to be looking for, for this device or this type of device. So you can see up on the screen that <coughs> we have a, a temperature plot and we also have the, the three-way or the three-axis accelerator, accelerometer working. So when I move the board, you can see this guy also moving up on the screen. So all via Wi-Fi. So you can imagine this type of board only has a couple of sensors on it, but I can use the GPIOs to connect any other type of sensor. It could be alarms, inputs, outputs, whatever. Very, very versatile type of development system and enables uh, quite a lot of functionality. Allow, it's a very small f form factor, and you can see there now Doll's House demo over here that we're able to, to plug into these GPIOs and control lights and motors, take temperature readings, and do a number of different things with it. The other approach to this is, in, in this scenario here, we're talking essentially from my tablet to the access point to, back to here, or from my PC to the access point back to here, and that's all within the home. Now, if I wanted to, to take a reader meeting or a, a, heat, a heat meeting or control my boiler or something from outside of the home, it's also possible. So there's if you can see from the, the slides, there's, there's certain websites that enable you to be able to connect to your home, provided that that website is able to, to read and understand your IP address. And there's a different ways of doing that, whether it's a, a, a dynamic D DNS that actually stores your IP address such that it always, this particular service, cloud service, always knows, to get, always knows how to get to your home. And in doing so, I could be outside my home with my tablet or my PC, log into a web server in the home space, and be able to control devices, monitor devices, understand whether there's a, there's a burglar in the home, if the alarm's gone off, and a number of different uh, types of application. And, and that's a big feature for, for this type of device and also the, the Internet of Things. Lastly, I just want to show you, this is not just a MSP-based type of demo. We have similar type of um, functionality on our Stellaris devices. So this is 32-bit uh, Cortex-M4. So if I just, if I power up this device, this has already got the firmware loaded. You see on the other side here, it's got a CC3000 device, very similar to this one. Um, it operates in exactly the same way. We've already done the, the smart config feature, so it's, it's actually already connected to the tablet and we can display it in here. In this case, it will actually be uh, not displaying Texas Instruments, but this is a Murata module, so a slightly different uh, signature that comes up for it. So let me just refresh this. So this particular demo <coughs> Is, is showing how we can do a web server and a web client on an MCU with wireless connectivity. So what it does is it, it actually, we don't have an internet connection here, so it's not really showing uh, the weather information, but the idea is that it, it goes to the, to the internet, it pulls off weather information for the city that you're actually in, and then it's a, you're able to log back into this 
and there's a web server on here. Log back into this with a particular IP address that is that is now showing on the um, on the dis on the display here. From this is the Murata Manufacturing. That's the IP address of this particular board. And then you're able to either configure the city, configure the, whether you want Celsius, centigrade, whatever, and also, of course, to actually display that that particular information. So it's a web server, web client, all connected with the CC3000 using a very uh, simple type MCU type interface. There's other applications, and as you can see from the slide, this is a, a, an example of a reference design, a wireless Wi-Fi connected power switch. So again, either operating through the, through the cloud or operating as a, a, from a tablet from inside the home, you're able to control different devices, lighting, Power, dev power connected devices, whatever you want. It's exactly the same concept. And finally, just to say that uh, we do have a, a demonstrator dollhouse over in the far uh, left hand corner, which shows a number of these devices sitting inside the dollhouse controlling different elements of the house. And um, it shows a much more integrated type of solution, but really still based on the same technology. Thank you for your time. Any questions?